the opportunity to skip a meal. I I just don't hurt me. I can't skip meals. I unless I had like if uh, if I knew I was going to be at the data center all day, I used to stop by Burger King and I would get the number the the croissant sandwich meal because I knew that if I got the large version of that, it was like a thousand calories, and it was like this tar that would sit in your stomach. So if I had to skip lunch, it wasn't. <laughs> And in Nebraska, we have something that the rest of you guys are completely naive about. The IT person's best meal on the planet that's completely developed for those of us who have to have one hand on something that can't be messy and the other hand on a mouse. The Runza. You guys don't have Runzas. Uh -uh. Runzas are the most glorious IT-based food on the planet. <laughs> and it's ubiquitous out here in Nebraska. Where it's so weird when people don't know what a runza is because uh, it's such you the a staple to our... Here, let me, let me uh, share my desktop. It is such a staple to our food system here in Nebraska. Beef, okay. cheese, sauerkraut stuffed in a bun. Oh, it's all self-contained. <laughs> Sounds okay, <laughs> but does it give you the runzas? No. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I I've got i got two boys, so we get no, no, little, you, 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 the, the swish mushroom my pocket. Oh, it's 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 just more more states need to do this. It's kind of a, a Swedish food, I want to say. What's what's beer rock? Uh, is that Swede? Anyways. So I in in my in my early days uh, back when uh, we did a lot of Novell work and uh, and I worked at a, a Novell training center. We were a Novell partner and we hosted a Novell training center. Yes, that's how long I've been doing this. Uh, and so we would bring in for some of our classes. We didn't have uh, a certified Novell instructor on staff, so we'd bring in these these different guys. And our training facility was in El Paso, Texas. And there is a local, you know, well-known establishment. If you've been through El Paso, you, you know about Chico's Tacos. All right. And uh, so we would take uh, some of these newbie instructors out and go, oh, I want something really authentic. So we'd take them to Chico's Tacos. And it'd be hilarious because, I mean, uh, you could tell it about 2.30 or so. Um, yeah, we, we, need, we, need to take a, we need to take a break. And so they're off to the bathroom. And they come back about an hour later, about 3.30, they go, uh, yeah, we need to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all to the bathroom. There's some things uh, you just can't handle unless you eat it all the time. And Chico's Tacos might fall into those categories. Yeah, I think Man, everybody's got one of those stories. And I, I warn my kids about it. And, and I've realized that there's some things that cannot be taught. They have to be learned. And <laughs> you know, some of that is with IT. You know, I keep telling people, stop making changes during the day. And uh, everybody thinks they can make a quick change. It's never going to take anything down. But you've been in IT long enough. You don't make that mistake once or twice. You've made it a couple of times, and now you no. know better. Now Same you thing know. with going out to restaurants. Wash your hands, people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the first time you get the trots, you're going to know why. <laughs> we call it fire butt for a reason. And, you know, I feel like there are certain lessons in life we just don't learn unless we experience. And yep. so with, with IT, that first time you take down a client network, because you did something simple and it had a cascading failure effect to it, it burns <laughs> <laughs> and it sucks. That's good. And yep. so you, you gotta, you gotta learn some of those lessons. So All somebody right. raised their hand. <laughs> <laughs> Probably Chris. <laughs> yep. So what I wanted to talk about today is a little bit about how many of you raise your hands um, if you know how to, uh, went to the live session we had yesterday on the webinar. <laughs> Bob, <laughs> yes. Bob has an epic fail story he talks about on our podcast. For those of you who have not gone to the Humanize IT podcast yet, um, Bob will be featured here in a couple weeks. Yeah. Whether you yeah. want to skip that episode or not. <laughs> But people who um, attended the meeting yesterday, I want to give you guys a little bit more of an in-depth look. Oops, let me stop responding just to panelists. 
um, I want to give people more of an in-depth look at like how to use um, the setup I have and Skip has to um, say to to say what you need to to your clients. As Bob said, Bob Bob thinks that the uh, the the session yesterday was better than a runza, evidently. <laughs> um, and it was, you know, we had so much follow up from it, and I highly recommend you all do a similar session where you talk to your clients about how to do better web presence because this is what everybody needs to know right now. They don't realize how much they suck. They don't realize that they look like this. They don't realize that they sound like, oh, here we go, Skip. Ready no, to no. Ride? Yes, this Wait, does. No. Uh, they don't realize they sound like this. And they're okay with it because this is the norm because everybody in their group sounds like this too. But when you, when you flip yourself over to a nice high quality microphone, suddenly your setup looks amazing. Yep. Down good. Because you know what? Let's be honest. Most of you have this minimized in the background anyways. You're not staring at our ugly mugs. You're listening to our voices. Mm -hmm. And then when you upgrade to your nice OBS um, setup and you look like this, suddenly you are a professional. And then when I'm talking to my clients, I flip over to, as you guys have seen me do this many times, I flip over to my desktop mode and I say, all right, let's talk through things. So what I want to give you guys today is a quick example of how to use this to talk to your clients, whether you're using OBS or just a regular uh, a session. So what I have done is I have a stream deck here. You can buy these things on um, Amazon and they allow you to push a button and switch scenes. And that's how I'm able to flip between this and this and hit record or go to a different camera and do things really quickly. Yes, that's the nice one too. There's one bigger than that one, there's one smaller than that one. So you don't have to buy the, the expensive one. <clears throat> they are nice for you technical people out there who like to have your scripts. You can tie a script to a button. They're perfectly programmable OLEDs. But the point is, is that all of this put together allows me to do presentations like you're talking about right here. I don't have to do any post editing on my presentations. There's no adding in of a background. There's no dropping things in, spending thousands of dollars on post editing for a training video. I just hit record on my stream deck and I can send a five minute video out to my clients. Right, let, let me let me put something in there quick about that. So all of us you know, on the call are familiar with Danish over at Managed Services Platform, right? And if you've, you've worked with him anytime, he's an interesting character, uh, very motivated, very passionate about what he's gonna do. And uh, it, again, if you worked for him very long, you've probably seen him experience, he, he gets these just bursts of great energy and great ideas. And, uh, and they, they happen, you know, uh, all the time. And so Danish quite often will go out, he uses Soapbox, he uses OBS sometimes, but he'll cr create a, a quick video. And so I'm, I've woken up many Monday mornings to uh, an inbox video from Danish, you know, and, and he's got this, this video and, he, and he's all worked up and he's all passionate about what it is, but he was working on something and he wanted to take just a few minutes to capture that to, and, and it does a great job because it, 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 one, it, it conveys the content, okay? So we know what he's trying to talk about without creating some long, long lengthy email, but I mean, he can create a five or six minute video and it's not only the, uh, the content, but it's the passion that he's trying to convey and he can bring in some examples. I mean, rather than trying to grab screenshots or bring it in, you know, he'll bring up a screen, he'll show you this or that, you know, and then he, he puts it down, he talks to Adam and I, you know, and it's a quick video, it's done and sent. And back to what you're saying, Adam there, it looks really good, but there's what well, some of his do, some of his don't, all right? It depends on what he wants to take the effort to do, but you can do those without all the post editing. It's not what, you know, all this stuff you have to go and render it's great opportunities to communicate with your clients in a very, very, very professional manner. Quick, relatable. I, I think it's really going to drive a lot of what we're doing going forward. Yeah. So the, what I do is like, let's say we're doing a QBR. <clears throat> let's say I have walked into your company today and I've got 20 of you sitting here and you're all at, you're wanting to see what the QBR looks like for your company. So what I'll do is I'll flip over and I will actually use a high def version. So 
with OBS for those of you who have seen me set up OBS. And if you want to know more about how to set up OBS, just set up some time. You guys are all members. You can have time with Skip or I, and we are happy to show you how to set up OBS so that it looks professional. Just be aware that it is a CPU hog. Yes. Well, uh, especially if you if you've got the canvas set up for 1080 like I do. It it can be Zoom. I think can sometimes be just as big a hog. So. No, yeah, we, we Skip and I have a debate on which one's the bigger hog. Yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure OBS is what slams me. Yeah. I, and I may go on the other route. So, I mean, and, and Adam and I are operating on totally different chipsets. Uh, you know, We're so that, that, guys. that could be an interesting uh, uh, analysis if anybody wants to go deep on that. The uh, You're an Intel guy, aren't you? I am. I'm running. Yeah. But an, an old Intel. <laughs> Versus the far superior AMD chipsets. And there we go. That's that's for another webinar. Uh, it, sh shall we do a screen share of your performance versus mine? <laughs> no, because it's not even. I, I'm not even going to say. I mean, I, I've I've shared it with you know with personal company how old my 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 workstation is, but I'm not ready to go out in public and say how, <laughs> how long I have made this thing work. Yeah, my PC is a good two years old. Yeah. Uh, part of, part of it's just you know uh, some morbid curiosity on my side. I mean, I know it's not the most effective thing, but all right, I'm going to do it anyway. I, I know I could. I, I just so everyone knows, I am operating off a 12 year old workstation. Yes, there there I said it. The chassis 12, is 12 years old. Yes, well, and the motherboard, and the motherboard, not much else. But anyway, <laughs> so you know you can do a lot, but maybe that's a, maybe that's a good um, a good. Um, you know, comparison here is, uh, while yes, this is a 12 year old system and yes, it does have dual, dual core Xeon <laughs> processors. So, I mean, it was an absolutely screaming beast when it was, when it was new. Um, you, you can do a lot of this without spending tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, you, you're not going to need a $20,000 video studio to do this kind of stuff. I mean, there, there's the, the good, better, best version of this, but all of them are going to be in a very affordable price range that I think you can leverage, uh, you know, the value pretty quickly and pretty easily with. And just so everyone knows, I'm going to drop it here in the, uh, in the chat. I'm putting out a, a link uh, that Adam and I are working off of uh, for Calendly specifically. If you guys want to, um, to, have us go through some of the, the video stuff. Uh, that link right there just makes it even more simpler. We'll, we'll know what you're wanting to talk about before the meeting even starts. So uh, feel free send to it, send it out to everybody, not just me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Details, details. Those are important. Okay. Thank you. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so this is what I use. There's also, if you want like a kind of a more pre can like Macintosh lover feel where they've kind of built things for you, you can go to Streamlabs. Yes, that's also who makes Stream Deck. So <clears throat> you come in here and they've got kind of a pre canned one that you can put together. And I'll have scenes for you. And it's a lot more complicated, in my opinion, than just using OBS Basic, which is, <laughs> a, you know, a little inception here. I've got my scenes that I can use and they kind of uh, flip through my preset things. It takes a little while to build it up, but once it's built up, you don't have to worry about it anymore. You just tap the scene, you want your sales scene, you tap your presentation scene, so that when I am doing a presentation with clients, so if I came in and I did a presentation with the clients, is I would come in and I would be able to pull up my QBR document and it sits behind me. And so <clears throat> the way a presentation looks via Streamlabs or via OBS, in this virtual setting is that I'm still in front of you. I'm still talking to you because I've got my filter on my background and I've got my screen shared. This is nothing fancy actually. This is just a two layer effect. And as I scroll down on this page, this is, I'm just sharing my monitor over here on the right, is I walk through and I go like, all right, let's talk about where we were. And so especially right now, this is, this is important to set the context of, we started off the year with this project list that just got blown to hell. Now, here are the ones that we've been able to continue doing this last quarter. Now, I'm going to step two. Uh, I've been able to do last quarter, and 
here are the ones that we had to cancel for last quarter because of concerns with finances and concerns with personnel being on site. Mm -hmm. So here is some ideas for next quarter that we want to talk through and you scroll down and you show your adjusted executive summary. Uh, hopefully you shared this out ahead of time. So they've been able to read that in an email, but let's talk about the new project roadmap that we're going to need to address. So let's go through the projects that are coming up and let's move these things back and forth. And let's talk about which ones we wanna cancel for the year and which of these recommendations we have up here that we wanna add in here to help you with your mobile uh, desktop support. So you're gonna use this to contain the context and keep in front of them. So they're staring at these gaps and these recommendations that you've done. This new state of things, now that you're presenting the, the quarter two findings and you're able to show them where they can go. Now, you might even put up the COVID report up here. Now that we've added this in, you might go into your client and, oh, I don't think we've done one for the example yet. No, we haven't done it for that one. Yeah. And you might add the COVID report and they might see their score here and like show how their remote workforce is like a 20% and you need to get them to 60 by implementing teams, by getting them standardized hardware at their homes and helping them uh, upgrade. And this is how the presentation looks. And if the, the number one thing you need here, you don't need a good webcam, you need a good microphone so that you're coming across very clear to your clients. You can do this fancy uh, backdrop with a crappy uh, a webcam. It, does, it, does, it just doesn't look as good. Um, I can actually do that live for you here right now. Uh, Adam's, Adam's, gonna, Adam's gonna bring next level stuff here. So video capture device, I'm gonna add in a really crappy camera here just real quick. So here's my, here's my, my quick cam pro 9,000. Okay. And then I'm going to just apply a filter to this. <clears throat> Is it green? Yep. It's green. All right. Yeah. And while we, I mean, just this brings such a dynamic to the engagements. I mean, everyone's on Zoom calls or, you know, whatever Teams, WebEx, whatever, they're, they're on there today. And, and there's always a distraction. There's always noise. And if you're trying to drive the conversation and, uh, you know, you, there, there, there are roadblocks in that in just what you're trying to convey visually and audibly. I mean, you're just really hurting yourself uh, in, in what you're trying to, to work with on your clients. So. All right, what am I missing here, Skip? I'm not even sure what you're trying to do. I was trying to apply the uh, green screen filter real quick. Oh yeah, it's an effect. Yeah, I know, and I applied it and it oh. didn't drop off the background. I don't know. Oh, I'm failing here. I'm failing my live <laughs> demo here. Well, that's what you get for going off the cuff. That's what I get for going off cuff, people. Nothing ever works the way you want it to. I mean, and, you know, some of the options that I, I, I'd went a little off cuff on the on one yesterday, I won't go into today, but you know, there's a really cool feature that allows me to use my phone as a webcam. Oh, I know what I did. I basically, I can stream the, the video from my phone into OBS and, and provide another camera. And, and that works out really well if you're needing to move around. I mean, if you want to, I don't know, do something in an environment uh, and it, this may work for your clients as well. I mean, may, maybe more applicable to some of their businesses. Uh, that's a real valuable and cool tool that you can put this video stream into OBS and the Zoom and everything else that we're doing, just like you would your webcam or the screen that you're sharing. So it's, it's a, there's a lot of valuable tools that give you a lot of opportunities in your engagement with clients. So, so here's me using a crappy webcam with, I was using the wrong, the wrong filter. My apologies. Uh, so this is me using a crappy webcam to uh, apply a filter. And you can see that I still don't look the best, but it's still way more professional than, um, than just dropping out completely. But investing in a good microphone and having a crappy webcam, you can still do cool things like this. You can still present yourself really, really well without having to be that, that 
ten th or that that one thousand dollar investment. Yeah, and again, you know, I've showed this example several times, and, and uh, we had comments out there from Chris asking about did did uh, Adam paint the wall behind him? And yes, I yes, mean, I he did. He did. But I mean, and you don't have to go that route. I mean, I've showed this several times to folks. Whoa, I mean, pay attention mine, to the man behind the curtain. That, that's it, exactly. I mean, mine is, uh, and just, you know, real, real <clears throat> technical here. I mean, mine is green felt. I've experimented. And I've used the, the green screen, the professional green screen material. And I think without going really high end and, and spending some serious bucks on it, I think the green felt works just as well. Yeah, so the felt also has some advantages to it for those of you who are looking into it. It, it does capture a lot of sound and it deadens that, that yes. echo going through your room. So that heavy felt material does help the acoustics in that busy office you had. Maybe you have a hardwood floor, maybe you have um, very bare walls and the, the sound echoes, that, that felt will help. I paint my walls green. So if you look at my Brio here, you can see that I'm actually sitting in a corner but if you guys want to see under the hood uh, of Adam Walter's setup, like oh, here's no. my 360 view. Like you can look over here and you can see I painted all the way to the edge of the wall. You can see my lights. You can see my white board walls where my kids uh, since the pandemic have come in and decorated profusely. You can see my touchscreen monitor over here. You can see my, my main screen here. You can see my shared screen over here. You can see my PC, microphones, cameras, lights. I have a whole setup here. Now you don't have to use a green wall. You can use a blue. So if your wife or, or a partner does not want you to uh, paint the walls green, go for blue, go for yellow, go for something that's a different color from your skin tone and different color from your swag. As long as you maintain those two things, you can use anything for a green screen. It does not matter. Have a nice blue, have a nice green, have a nice yellow, have a nice red. Just paint something in the background and it can look nice and professional in your office without having to uh, go through a lot of work. This is an Argyle green. I like Argyle green. It looks very nice in person. People come into my office and they really like the color. I don't have anything hanging on the wall, obviously, outside of my, my uh, graphite pencil idea over there. <laughs> but uh, the, the concept is that you can look at a very nice office. You just need to have a setup or throw up a curtain behind you. Yeah, and then you can do things like this and this seamlessly. Now the, the, the curtain or just the fabric. So in, uh, in my other office, um, and so those of you spent time on me probably heard me complaining, so I won't do it again. But <laughs> so I, I work in two places and uh, in the other office, uh, it's a little bit tighter constraint. So the corner uh, utilization that Adam's doing does help. I mean, it helps with this, this expanse. I mean, here I'm a little limited. And if you guys, let me get my hands in the right area here. So, you know, my, my width on this is a little constrained because the way this workstation is set up. In my other one, I can go out a bit wider because I'm actually in a corner. And um, I couldn't paint that wall though. I'm just renting that space. So they wouldn't let me paint it. So what I've done is I've taken, again, the material and I uh, tacked it to the wall. I just used thumbtacks. It's nice and smooth. It fits. It's, it's semi-permanent. You know, I'm not going to get dinged when I, uh, when I cancel the lease and move out, but it, it's up there and it works really, really well and was pretty yeah, easy no, as well. And no matter what you're talking about here, you're talking a couple bucks. I mean, less yep. than a hundred bucks to do something like this. Exactly what I'm doing here, what Skip's doing on his where when you're doing meetings with your clients, you can throw, like you guys have seen the, me in enough of these sessions where I have been drawing on the back here and I have been doing fun little things to engage my audience and engage you guys. This is free. OBS is free. Microsoft Whiteboard is already on your system. The filter to make it so that your, your monitor is your background is free. All this stuff is free. All you have to do is get a green screen for your back. That's it. We're not, you don't have to do anything really fancy. This is just about 
uh, an hour of effort with OBS, virtual cam, and a couple layers with a green screen. Yep. And you can have a presentation so that when you're talking QBRs with your clients, and the reason you want to strike while the iron's hot right now is that everybody's having virtual meetings, so they, they don't have a choice. Yeah. But you want to make Absolutely. these meetings so dynamic and so engaging that once the quarantine is lifted in your area of the world, your clients prefer meeting like this because we, none of us like to drive everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're in Texas, because it's like 30, it's 30 minutes just to go to like the, the neighbor's house. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, so I, I we had a, a, such a clear example of this uh, in a coaching session last week. So, um, you know, I'm hosting the Zoom, obviously. I've got two staff members from the same company uh, joining the call. They come in and uh, one of them has returned to the office and they've opened things up a little bit. So they got limited access. So he's sitting in the office. It's a very standard professional office looking environment. Okay. But it's just a webcam sitting on top of the monitor. Um, it's just a really basic webcam. That's his audio. I mean, there was, it, it wasn't anything great. It wasn't necessarily bad, but it wasn't anything great. All right. And then, uh, so the other staff member joins. This one is still at home and is in what looks like perhaps a formal-ish type living room setting. I mean, it's not high-end art deco. It's not some, you know, really cool, fantastic place. It's just, you know, your basic living room kind of setup. So visually, nothing's different, but he had a different mic, all right? And there's always that little moment there, you know, when someone joins a call and they're in the session, but you see the little indicator says their audio is connecting, right? <laughs> and so we see him come up and we're waiting on his audio connect and it connects and he goes, hello, are you there? Can you hear me? And the audio was just totally different. I mean, night and day different from his coworkers. And I commented, I said, great radio voice. All right, because he had this rich, warm sound. And if he's going to lead an engagement, you're going to listen to him. If his, if his coworker is going to try to lead an engagement, you're going to be led to distraction. I mean, it's just, it's not an engaging element there. So, uh, you know, this is becoming a, it, it's very tactical and technical, you know, and Adam and I are always about being the strategic, but I think this is what's going to help enable you to deliver these strategic methods in a, in a much more effective manner. Yeah. And, you know, again, it doesn't require much. You get, most of you, um, except for uh, uh, Chris, are technical on this call. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you, uh, you know how to, you'll, you'll, you'll muddle your way through it. And if you can figure out how to do it on your own and say even export one of these scenes from OBS that you can give to a client, this becomes something, this becomes a package you can sell. This becomes a really easy thing you can do. My office looks like crap. Uh, but when you guys look at me here, you see my nice background, whatever I'm having. I have my logo. I can change this to be outdoors. I can be on a beach. Uh, I can attract people's attention like this, not because it's a gimmicky, but because it's something different. People's eyes focus over on me. And how often do you minimize a scene where you're like looking at the, the, the fronds, maybe you're looking at the clouds, are the clouds moving too? And you're still listening to me talk, you're still getting impressions on my logo here, and I'm holding your attention. It, and the pairing of a great uh, scene with your audio will hold attention so that when you're in these QBRs, you're able to hold their attention as well. And they want to know, like, this is a dynamic feeling. I am switching. I am showing you how I am uh, engaging. It's not just a PowerPoint slide deck on the screen that you're going to give me later. I might miss something if I'm not paying attention to the screen right now. And, and, and there's even, I mean, you know, there's always the opportunity for a nice little icebreaker to come in and, you know, really start off and just kind of connect with someone out of the blue. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, there's oh, just so much, there, there's really a lot of opportunities to, to, to go to the next level without, you know, just, uh, just spending a ton of money. And, and so I wanted to show everyone there, uh, my little, um, uh, setup because, you know, 
I, I think I've gone down a step. Adam's really, uh, you know, definitely gone up a notch, but uh, it, it's not a lot. I mean, I don't have the, the bigger lights. And now if you, if you look at through some of our stuff, you can tell Adam's video, you know, has, it, it's, it's, if I'm the mid layer, Adam's the top layer, right? You know, so if, if Adam's the gold layer, mine's the silver, right? And what you don't want to be is you don't want to be the bronze, right? I mean, if maybe that's a bad analogy, I don't know. But, you know, there's a couple of different ways you can slice and dice this, but, you know, it, it doesn't have to be overly complicated and certainly not overly expensive. Yeah, so the, 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 the thought I want to leave everybody with today is that, using the tips we have, and I will send everybody a copy of the webinar from yesterday. And using the stuff we talked about today is that it doesn't take much to make your clients believe and see that you are next gen, that you are different. And so whether your sales staff are doing using this setup or you are using it to present QBRs, the importance is that you have dynamic in meetings that you're changing things up and that it's very simple to get here. You just need to know about it. And your clients will ask, how are you doing that? And like, well, this is one of the advantages to having us as your MSP. Because you take things to a whole new level. No one else is doing stuff like this. Feel free to prove me wrong, people. Outside of Twitchers, who else is using subs like Skip and I are? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's easy to do. It's engaging. It allows your clients to know that they've hired the best. And there's a lot of subtlety to this just because, you know, your microphone, your video, my lighting looks good. And I look way more professional than the next person that's going to come in and sell them on the distributed workforce solution. Yep. The next person is going to come in and look like this or this, and they're going to sound terrible you are going to look amazing. And even if you don't have the best solution, if for some reason, maybe your technology portfolio isn't as good as some of the big MSPs, they're going to trust you more because you feel more human. You feel real. And they're gonna remember that. The other people are gonna look like TV evangelists with their PowerPoint presentations and slide decks. You're gonna look yeah. like that friend who's gonna come in and help them today. Yeah. Well, Bob and I were talking earlier and, uh, you know, how many of you now are, you know, more engaged socially in your video calls than you were before, you know, pre pandemic, if you engage with someone in some sort of video conference app, you know, it was very objective. Hey, we're, we're on the call. Let's get this done. But now when this is, you know, has become for many people, their only interactions outside of their house, uh, you know, th they're willing to give a little bit more time into, you know, talking about what's going on and, uh, you know, just being relatable. And, you know, Bob actually levers, I'll, I'll plug Bob here a little bit. He leverages his a little bit and, uh, you know, he's got some stuff in the background that is kind of conversation points, all right? He doesn't necessarily need to, you know, remove it all out because it's a, it's a, it's an appropriate, it's a, it's a, a useful background to put behind him. And so he's a musician and, you know, inevitably you're going to get, you know, some of the conversations going that way. But my, my, my real drive here, here is we have an opportunity to engage with people on a much more human level than what we might've been doing before. And uh, we certainly need to seize on that opportunity. I think the uh, Chris, just your, to give you a more pointing answer, the blue snowball is the default, like fifty dollar, uh, really great mic. You can't go wrong with it. The high end mics, you're going to want to get one of those Rode USBs or what Skip and I have been pining after, the neat Bumblebee. Yep. Uh, yep. It just looks cool. I, it, 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 you know, if Skip has a link to it right now. You can from Sweetwater. It's, it's just got that, that gotta trendy yellow look. I think Skip's probably got it like on a, on a fold out three poster uh, in his house because it is, <laughs> we talk about it all the time, how we just need to get one. Yep. And uh, the idea is that you're getting anything that's not built in. Yes. And getting the nice sound going, getting that is going to just the blue snowball, $50 investment 
will change how people hear you. Like when you join the rooms, kind of like what Skip said, you'll join in and have a radio quality with a blue snowball. A Yeti, you're going to want to be tempted to get a Yeti. But again, a Yeti is meant for a very, very quiet room. So if your dog farts nearby, that Yeti's going to pick it up. But you're going to sound sexy while he's farting. So uh, be careful when you're getting those $120 mics. They may not be the best one for your setup. Do a little research. Uh, my, one of my favorite guys I like to watch is Booth Junkie. He is a voiceover actor. And he talks a lot about different microphones and how you can have a thousand dollar microphone you can have a fifty dollar microphone they can sound exactly the same if your environment is quiet yeah but you get things like a blue snowball Ooh, the bumblebees in stock yep uh they they have a lot of built-in filters and they take a lot of the customization off your hands for me i was just showing people earlier today uh let me flip over to my brio again this is this is my board this is my board. This goes to out to my microphone, my Deity S2 here. Uh, it's a shotgun mic, so it, it, it blocks out anything behind it. You can't hear it, but my, my son's watching TV in the other room, and you cannot tell. But then I have this line going to my line in. And also a focus right over here, which has been fired because it kept causing problems. <laughs> so um, there, may be a, there may be a burn party later on it. I don't know. I kind of, I'm still, I still think it might be, have something to do with my USB power being out of whack. Yeah. So. Well, and, you know, so I have a similar board. I think I showed y'all that. And so Adam, I really like that, especially because a lot of the recordings that we do, we really, really want to dial in uh, our audio. However, as I mentioned, that other site that mm -hmm. I, I'm at, it's just a straight USB mic. It's not the best. And that's why I, I keep wanting to swap it out with uh, the Bumblebee mic. But uh, I forget, I've had that mic for a long time. I mean, it's just a, it's a plain, simple, boring USB mic. But the, the, the big deal is it's a condenser diaphragm. You know, technically speaking, that's how that microphone works. Uh, and it, it works really well. It gets, it gets that bigger presence, that bigger sound, uh, and, and it makes all the difference in, in our sessions. So that, those, are, those are the main things I, I just wanted you guys to know today uh, off the session yesterday was that presentation matters right now. Setting yourself apart right now is going to save you a bunch of money going forward as your clients start preferring doing things this way. As they start wanting you to have virtual setups, you're setting a new norm. It takes 90 days to set a new norm. So that's two QBRs. By the time you do your second QBR, Everybody's going to be used to meeting you, you like this. So that even when they go back on site, they're going to be like, hey, when are we having our QBR? And you send them another Zoom invite. Yep. And now you can meet with them virtually. Now that your clients are comfortable with this. Uh, so as you get better at VCO services and you start doing this, you can start expanding your portfolio to towns that are not nearby, doing VCIO for them and bringing next level services to a larger client base, even if you're not doing MSP services with them. So with that, if you have any questions about how to do this setup, if you want us to walk you through, we can have you done in an hour and have you looking like this. You'll still need to get your own backgrounds, um, but set up some time with that link that Skip just sent out get get it on our calendar and let's let's get you upgraded to this let's get you in place so you look different i want people to see a humanized it member and go oh my gosh this person knows what they're doing they look professional they feel professional and they know what they're talking about and i want to give them all my monies and with go. that i'm going to sign off uh, if anybody has any questions feel to reach out free to reach out in an email or uh sign up for a session with us all right we'll talk to you later all right. thanks everyone bye